income elasticity of demand so the income elasticity of demand is defined as the percentage change in quantity demanded for a particular good say good x divided by the percentage change in income now as we've seen before this can be expressed like this the change in quantity demanded of x over change in income multiplied by the particular income level divided by the quantity demanded so you need to learn both these expressions for a normal good income elasticity is positive and most goods are normal goods a positive income elasticity says that as income goes up the quantity demanded for a particular good goes up so if this is the case then we say that the good is normal some goods are inferior goods here when the income goes up the quantity demanded comes down so consider places like india and pakistan and think about a regular bicycle which is used for actual transportation not for recreation now generally bicycles are used by people who are relatively poor if their income levels go up then instead of a bicycle they would prefer a motorcycle so we can say that at least in south asia regular bicycles are probably inferior goods as incomes go up the quantity demanded for regular bicycles goes down in the us context we can think of uh, fast food as being an inferior good so in the us fast food is relatively inexpensive so if a family from let's say a low income background decides to go out they are probably going to visit a fast food joint but as income levels go up then they might prefer going to a fancier restaurant so there as income goes up if the quantity demanded for fast food comes down then we can say that fast food is an inferior good in an exam context you need to be able to calculate the income elasticity and you also need to be able to say whether the good that we are talking about is normal or inferior so we go back to this expression that we've used for chairs the quantity demanded for chairs is equal to this now here we are only going to consider the impact of a change in income so assume the own price stays the same and the price of tables stays the same what happens to the quantity demanded when income goes up so notice a positive relationship here when the income goes up the quantity demanded goes up so this implies that chairs are a normal good if this demand function holds now you might be asked to calculate that elasticity number so what you would do is take this coefficient so that's this number over here so that is delta q over delta i which as i've discussed before is this coefficient so the elasticity is going to be 0.06 times the income level divided by quantity demanded so if you are given an income level of 2000 so on your exam this number will be given and then you will be given a certain quantity so let's say that number is 75 you can simply plug in the numbers and calculate the income elasticity of demand the cross elasticity of demand has to do with how the quantity of a given product x is impacted by the change in price of another product say y now going back to a example on chairs and tables so this is the demand function for chairs so quantity demanded of chairs is given by this expression now let's say the price of chairs is the same the income level doesn't change but the price of another product tables changes what is the impact on the quantity demanded of chairs and that's where the cross elasticity of demand comes in if the quantity demanded of chairs is very sensitive to the price of tables then we say that this cross elasticity is high so this is the basic expression which takes the same form as the other elasticity expressions the difference is always in the denominator 
so the numerator always is the percentage change in quantity demanded for our item x the denominator for own price was the percentage change in the price of x when we talked about income elasticity then the denominator was the percentage change in income and now with cross elasticity the denominator is the percentage change in price of the other item this can then be simplified as follows and again this should look familiar the first part is the coefficient so change in Q over change in price of the other product that is going to be this item here so with chairs and tables where chair is the product that we are studying and tables is the other product this is going to be 0 0.01 and then we multiply by the price of the other product divided by the quantity demanded of X on the next slide we'll do an example that covers this formula in detail the cross elasticity of demand is positive for a substitute so what does this mean let's say that you have a product such as chairs and a substitute to chairs is stools if the price of stools goes up what will happen to the quantity demanded for chairs obviously the quantity demanded will go up on the other hand if the price of stools comes down more people are likely to buy stools so the quantity demanded for chairs comes down notice that the price of a substitute and the quantity demanded of our product move up and down together so when this goes up the quantity demanded goes up when this comes down the quantity demanded comes down so that is why the cross elasticity of demand is positive for a substitute what if we have a complement so clearly tables complement chairs with a complement the cross elasticity is going to be negative and that's what we are seeing over here this negative sign is telling us that if the price of tables goes up then the quantity demanded of chairs which is the product that we are concerned with will go down now let's consider a very simple example so we are given this demand function so we have a product A and the quantity demanded of A is expressed in terms of the price of A the income level the price of B and then the price of C so B and C are other products at a given point in time we are told that the price of A is 10 and the price of B is 55 price of C is 10 and the income level is 2000 the first question is calculate the own price elasticity of demand for A now you need to remember the formulas so the own price elasticity of demand for A is given by this coefficient so that's minus 12 multiplied by the price over quantity so we take the own price and divide by the quantity so we know the own price is 10 but we do not know the quantity however based on all these values the quantity can easily be calculated so we can plug 10 over here income level is 2000 so we plug that here price of B is 55 price of C is 10 when we plug in these numbers we get quantity equal to 90 so now we can solve this easily so we have minus 12 into price of A which is 10 divided by quantity which is 90 and this gives us minus 1.33 as we've discussed before the own price elasticity is generally going to be negative because when the own price goes up the quantity demanded will typically go down so that explains the negative number 1.33 has an absolute value more than 1 so this is elastic next question income elasticity of demand for A so again this takes the same form with income elasticity we take this coefficient and notice that this is a positive which means that item A is a normal good so we take the coefficient which is 0 
multiplied by now the denominator will always be the quantity the numerator here is income so what is the income level over here it is 2000 that comes from here and when we solve this we get 0 0.33 this is a positive number which implies that the product is a normal good and it's relatively low so the income elasticity is relatively low third question cross price elasticity of demand again the same form so we want the cross price elasticity of demand for A against the price of B so that's this item now we take this coefficient 3 because that's the coefficient related to the price of B so we take 3 multiplied by the price of B which is 55 divided by the quantity which is 90 so this is 1.83 a positive number and we could see that this is positive right up over here which implies that as the price of B goes up the quantity demanded of A goes up so this means that B and A must be substitutes and in fact this is a relatively high number so the quantity demanded of A is fairly sensitive to changes in price of B so are A and B substitutes or complements the answer is that clearly A and B are substitutes what about the cross price elasticity of demand of A against the price of C now I want you to do this and again this is fairly straightforward so minus 4.5 you take that coefficient and then multiplied by the price of C which is 10 divided by 90 this is a negative number which implies that A and C are complements we have talked about the law of demand which says that a decrease in price causes the quantity demanded to increase and this explains a negatively sloped demand curve so as always we have price over here quantity here and as we decrease price the quantity demanded typically increases now there are two reasons for the law of demand one reason is the substitution effect and the other reason is the income effect so let's understand the substitution effect first consider a product such as apricots and then let's say that the other product is a basket of other fruits now what happens when the price of apricots comes down if the price of apricots comes down then apricots are cheaper relative to other fruit so consumers are then likely to buy more apricots in essence since apricots are cheaper they are substituting more apricots into their diet so this is a substitution effect which implies that a lower price causes a higher quantity demanded what about the income effect again apricots on the one hand this is our product and then we have a basket of other fruits when the price of apricots comes down the real income of the consumer goes up because if the consumer is still buying the same amount of apricots let's say in a given month he consumes 50 apricots but if the price of apricots is lower then he spends less money but still gets the same number of apricots and therefore we can say that his spending power has increased which means that the real income has increased if real income has increased and apricots is a normal good then what will happen to the quantity demanded the answer is the quantity demanded will go up so higher real income this is a normal good so quantity demanded goes up so in this case the income effect is also causing the quantity demanded to go up and this is all happening in response to a lower price so remember lower price is what causes the real income to effectively become higher and hence the quantity demanded is also going up
so when we have a decrease in price the increase in quantity is happening because of the substitution effect and the income effect now let's draw a distinction between normal goods and inferior goods remember a normal good has a positive income elasticity which means that when income goes up the quantity demanded goes up with an inferior good we have a negative income elasticity so if income goes up quantity demanded comes down here we are actually considering real income and earlier I talked about regular income but that applies but this concept still applies with real income so with a normal good what happens when the price comes down so price comes down substitution effect as we just saw with apricots is that quantity demanded goes up what about the income effect for a normal good when price goes down the real income goes up and with a normal good the quantity demanded goes up this is what we just saw now coming to an inferior good when the price goes down the substitution effect still says that quantity goes up so remember the inferior good is an inferior good because of the income effect this is the substitution effect so the substitution effect still says that a lower price results in a higher quantity but what about the income effect price goes down which means that real income goes up and with an inferior good the real income going up causes the quantity demanded to go down so with an inferior good the two effects the substitution effect and the income effect operate in opposite directions for most inferior goods the substitution effect dominates the income effect which means that a decrease in price still results in an overall increase in quantity demanded there are however some exceptions now consider a Giffen good and this is named after an economist who first saw this phenomenon that I'm about to describe now there can be a situation where the income effect dominates the substitution effect so let's say that we are in rural China and we are considering the demand for rice now the poor peasants spend most of their money on rice which is their staple food what happens when the price of rice goes down so price of rice goes down the substitution effect still says that the quantity demanded will go up because rice is now cheaper relative to other goods so the consumer ie the poor peasant in this case is going to consume more rice because of the substitution effect so the quantity demanded is up according to the substitution effect but what about the income effect when the price is down the real income for this peasant goes up and since rice is an inferior good for the poor peasant the quantity demanded actually comes down what the peasant might now do is take this extra disposable income that he has and spend it on other food items such as meat and vegetables so the quantity of rice demanded goes down when his real income goes up if the income effect dominates the substitution effect then what do we have then a decrease in price is also resulting in a decrease in quantity so if we look at a demand curve with price over here and quantity over here let's say with let's say that we start at this point and say the price comes down if the price comes down and the quantity also comes down then we have this shape of the demand curve and this is a positively sloped demand curve so for Giffen goods remember two key points key point number one is that it's an inferior good where the income effect is dominating the substitution effect and the second point is that for such a good we have 
a positively sloping demand curve. So that is one exception to the law of demand. Another exception to the law of demand has to do with Veblen goods. Now these are conspicuous consumption goods. These are goods that derive value based on their price. People buy these goods to show others that they have a lot of money. So in other words, if these goods become more expensive, then they become even more valuable. Think about jewelry or luxury cars where if somebody is driving a luxury car to show how well off he is, then the luxury good becoming even more expensive will increase demand. So here again, looking at the demand curve, if we are at this point and the price goes up, if this is a conspicuous consumption good which derives its value based on how expensive it is, then a higher price would mean a higher quantity demanded. So this also would have a positively sloped demand curve. Now the Giffen good and the Veblen good both have a positively sloped demand curve but for very different reasons and you need to understand the reasons that I just talked about.